Good morning and welcome to the worship service for First United Methodist Church in Plant City, Florida. I want to welcome you to our online worship video. Um, there are just a few things to say. We are currently not having in-person worship. Online worship is what we're offering at this time. Uh, we will have a relaunch meeting on this Tuesday and that will give us an idea about moving forward. Uh, so look out for news for that. Please make sure you're signed up online www.firstchurchplantcity.com to receive all of our e newsletters and um, information that will be coming out in the next few weeks. Thank you so much and enjoy worship. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Psalms 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. We've come to the time of our service where we collect tithes and offerings. You can uh, participate in this by going online to members.myeoffering.com or you can mail in a check to 303 North Ever Street. Plant City, Florida, 33563. We thank you for helping us to continue to be the church in this time. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Psalm 121, says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. When we are in stress, we too call out to you, but all too seldom. Help us, Lord, to seek your guidance daily. Psalm 121 goes on to say in verse 3, He will not let your foot slip. In verse 5, He watches over you. In verse 7, He will keep you from all harm. 
In verse 8, he will watch over your coming and going. Lord, help us to take these promises to heart, to reach out and share with our neighbors. Help us to pray daily without ceasing and, and to pray in the way that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Will you hear the word of the Lord? Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people think. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. 
However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. A man began to pray, so for today, God, I've done all right. I haven't gossiped, haven't lost my temper, haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm really glad about that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed, and from then on, I'm going to need some more help. Amen. We're going to be talking about prayer this morning. I've preached about prayer before, but I don't think that we can be reminded enough to pray and what prayer can do for our walk with Jesus and our spiritual health. Our passage this morning begins with the words, Then. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So it is only natural to ask what came before our passage to make Jesus say this parable. Well, at the end of chapter 17, Jesus talks about the coming of the kingdom of God. And he talks about the suddenness of it. For the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating and drinking, marrying and being given in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark, and then the flood came and destroyed them all. I tell you, on that night two people will be in one bed, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding together, one will be taken and one will be left. Jesus is talking about the suddenness of it. Maybe the disciples are struggling and they're worried. The disciples may be filled with fear at the thought of Jesus not being with them anymore. So Jesus tells them through a parable not to give up hope, but to pray. And not just simply pray, but to pray continually. To be persistent in prayer. To pray expecting an answer. Now, the definition of a parable states a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson, or you could say a small story with a big point. Jesus told parables all the time. I'm sure the disciples probably grew, grew tired of the parables and would have preferred Jesus just to state things plainly. But Jesus wants to get his point across with a parable. I think one reason is that you remember a parable. Jesus could have simply told the disciples, pray, pray all the time. But now when the disciples think of prayer, they will remember the persistent widow. A parable will linger in your memory. What's unusual about this parable is that Luke reveals the point of the parable before Jesus says it. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. The Greek word for always means at all times. Jesus is telling them to pray again and again again. What does Paul remind us in 1 Thessalonians? Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians, Paul tells us, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Now, I've read people that will say that once you've asked God for something, that you're showing a lack of faith if you keep asking for it again and again. The Gospel of Mark, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. But this parable makes it clear that we are to continue to pray until we receive the answer we're seeking. If you pray again and again, it's not a sign that your faith is weak, it is a sign of a persistent faith that doesn't give up. Now, I know there can be a big difference in what people pray for. Too many people can try and use God as a vending machine. I want this, I want that. There is a difference if you pray to God again and again for the healing of a loved one or to intervene in a difficult situation in your life as opposed to praying to God again and again for a new golf cart or some other luxury item you don't really need. Now the danger of persistent prayer is that it's easy to get discouraged. Am I just talking into thin air? Is God even there? I'm tired of coming again and again to petition God for a real need in my life. The word give up used here by Luke means 
to lose one's motivation, to lose enthusiasm, to be discouraged, you really do just give up. Well, let's turn to the parable itself and see what Jesus is trying to tell us. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about him. By not fearing God, it is implying that the judge had no concern for God's justice. After all, he was a judge. He didn't need God for that. He could mete out justice on his own, thank you very much. Nor did he care about people. The word used here means he didn't respect people. They were just case numbers that came before him. Basically, he was concerned about himself. His own opinion is what mattered. In verse 6, Jesus calls him unjust. Jesus doesn't tell us why he's unjust, but we can probably guess. Throughout history, why do most people act unjustly? Most likely, probably had to do with money. The judge was probably used to people offering bribes, greasing the wheels of justice, offering favors, all in an effort for, 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 for profession, preferential treatment. Well, here's this widow. She's one of the weakest and most vulnerable members of society. She had nothing whatsoever she could influence this judge with. The wife of a deceased husband had no legal right to inherit the husband's estate. So when her husband died, she couldn't take granted for living in the house. It was all up in the air. If they had no children, the estate reverted to her husband's male relatives on her father's side. If she had grown children, things might be easier. Hopefully they would take care of her needs. But things could be very precarious for a widow, especially if her own family was unable or unwilling to take her back in. Now we're not told what the grievance the widow had that was bringing before the judge, but the scales of justice were not in her favor. The deck was stacked against her. She evidently had a beef with somebody. She had a grievance. Her constant plea was, grant me justice against my adversary. But she did have one thing going for her. She was persistent. She did not give up and she did not go away. It says she kept coming. The phrase kept coming is a common Greek verb. It means repeated, continuing action again, again, again. She had not come just once, but over and over and over. She was not going to take no for an answer. Maybe she was hungry. The children are hungry. She's homeless. Who in that same situation wouldn't do everything they could to seek justice? That's for some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. This widow was so troublesome and causing such distress that the judge is like, fine, I'll give you what you want just so you'll go away. Now what is also happening is that his reputation may have started to be in question. The Old and New Testaments are replete with references to take care of the needs of widows and orphans. In Exodus we read, Do not take advantage of the widow or the fatherless. If you do and they cry out to me, I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will be aroused. In the book of James, it says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. It is the duty of the Christians and Jews alike to take care of the needs of the widow, who in the first century world were many times in a very fragile and precarious state of existence and relied on the charity of others for survival. So it is this judge, he's probably being viewed by the people as being harsh and unfair to a widow. He's crashing up against what is required of him by the law and expected from society. His character is probably being called into question. This nobody widow is starting to make the judge sweat. He's wearing him out. So he decided to grant her her wish simply to get rid of her. Now, of course, this is just a story Jesus is telling to make a point. But everyone listening to Jesus would have been very familiar with vulnerable widows and corrupt officials. They would have understood the point. Jesus ends by saying, listen to what the un unjust judge says 
And will not God bring about justice for his cho cho chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. The point Jesus is driving home is that God is just. He's making a stark comparison here. If an unjust and corrupt and selfish judge will see that justice is finally done in response to repeated and persistent requests, how much more will God, who is just and who does love us and who is merciful to us, will bring justice to those who call on him repeatedly and continually and pray? I'll be the first to admit that sometimes it seems like God will never answer I can give you no solace to those times when you've cried out to God and it seems like you were receiving no answer. Your burden was not lifted. I just have to leave that hanging. Sometimes I have no answer. And we will have to wait until we are on the other side of eternity to finally ask God why. It's easy to get discouraged, disappointed. But what Jesus is telling us here is that we need to keep praying. Be persistent. Don't give up. Actually, be unrelenting in your prayers. And how can we pray all the time? That daily life to attend to. Or as Paul tells us to do, pray continually. Well, listen to what St. Basil the Great, Bishop of the Early Church, wrote. He says, this is how you pray continually. Not by offering prayer in words, but by joining yourself to God through your whole way of life, so that your life becomes one continuous and uninterrupted prayer. How you live and move in this world can be a prayer to God. How you interact with co-workers and friends and family can be a prayer to God. How you carry yourself in your daily life can be a prayer to God. We can pray continually. Jesus is telling his disciples and he's telling us to always be awake and aware of the world around you. To see the hurting and hungry and thirsty and lost and be ready to be the hands and feet of Jesus to this world. And if you look at this whole section of Luke, Jesus is also reminding us to be aware and awake for his return and not to be caught off guard. Jesus ends our passage by saying, however, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he? Jesus told a parable about a widow that did not give up. And she finally gets what she's been pleading for. So what about you? Me? We can become so worn down and discouraged that we stop praying, stop hoping, stop expecting God to do anything. As we take communion this morning, reminded once again that we worship a living and risen Savior. We worship a God that is active and working in this world and in our lives. But we're to keep praying, keep asking, be persistent in your prayers. As you take the bread and juice, be nourished by it so that you can keep on praying again and again. Make your whole life a prayer to God. Keep expecting Keep hoping our God is faithful and just. May Jesus find faith among us when he returns. Amen. As we come now to communion, um, if you need to pause the video and go get the juice or bread or crackers or whatever you plan to use to, to take communion, you can do that now. Um, but now let us come and receive God's blessing through communion. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, after supper, he took a loaf of bread. And he took that bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this represents my body, which will be broken for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and eat in remembrance. Also after supper he took a cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink. This represents my blood of a new covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of me. The 
body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you, take and receive. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to come and share in communion, even virtually, where we are still the one body of Christ. Help us to be nourished by your blood and body so that we can continue to pray, continue to come to you, continue to serve you. Let us do this again and again and again as we receive communion. We ask this in your name. Amen. And now receive God's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.